Every true football fan loves a really good underdog story. In fact, if you are like myself, you have a favorite Premier League team, and then have a favorite lower league team as well. Mine is Derby County, unfortunately. We always dream of the days when these teams are able to play in the top flight with the likes of Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool and Arsenal. However, these teams often find it difficult to successfully progress through the leagues due to restricted budgets and low-quality players in their squads. So we rarely ever get to see these true underdogs perform at the world's highest level. One team is keeping our hopes and dreams alive of seeing our teams progress into the top flight in the future though, and their name is Luton Town. So join me in today's video, as we will be talking about the Hatter's recent fairy tale of reaching what so many clubs continuously fail to do, the excitement of the Premier League. Let us start from the beginning and see how Luton Town got themselves to the non-league division in the first place. Since its foundation in 1885, Luton Town has been yo-yoing back and forth in the lower divisions. The 1955-1956 season was their first time reaching the top flight division. However, it didn't last long, as Luton Town was relegated the following season. Ten years later, the club continuously moved down the ranks, playing in the fourth tier. The club continued going up and down between divisions, and in 1982, the Hatters finally returned to the top flight. This could be considered the club's most successful spell in England's first division as it achieved its highest ever league position, finishing seventh under John Moore in 1986-1987. A year later, Luton Town lifted their first and only title in the top flight as they won the Football League Cup with a 3-2 win over Arsenal in the final. In 1992, the club got relegated once again. And from that moment onwards, Luton Town started to spiral down towards non-league football. The club quickly sank to League One, where they remained until they were relegated to League Two. At the end of the 2000-2001 season, Luton Town won promotion the following season and were crowned League One champion in the 2004-2005 campaign. The club seemed to be back on the rise from an outside perspective, but it turned out this was not the case. It was later founded, the club was struggling financially and entered administration despite being champions. The club kept on struggling and were relegated twice in a row, starting in the 2006-2007 season. And in the 2008-2009 season, Luton Town was deducted a total of 30 points from their current season tally for financial irregularities involving player transfers and rule breaks with exiting administration. This punishment proved to be the final nail in the club's coffin as the points deduction sent them straight to the conference premier for the first time in their history. After a disappointing stretch of years in the conference premier, it was obvious the Hatters needed to make drastic changes. Insert John Still. This turned out to be the club's best decision made in a long time, a still completely transformed Luton Town. Still quickly made his mark on the club, releasing nine total players and transfer listing five, while bringing in six immediate impact players with promotion pedigree and knowledge of his system of play. This in fact turned his team into a goal-scoring machine, in which they won promotion to League Two in 2014, scoring a staggering 100 goals and conceding just 34. With an almost inexistent budget, the following transfer markets still targeted free transfers and loan deals to strengthen his squad. He also looked to loan players from Premier League U21 teams, which was the case for defensive midfielder Peli Ruddock M. Panzu. Panzu won promotion to League Two with Luton Town, coming on loan from West Ham's under-21 team. But when his loan deal ended, the Hatters immediately signed him permanently, which turned out to be the best choice of his career, which we'll get to later on. Andre Gray, who was brought on loan in 2012 from Hinkley United, played a crucial part for John Still, acting as the leading man up front. Gray scored 30 goals in 44 games for Luton Town during their promotion year which earned him an upgrade in 2015 as he moved to Brentford, who were playing in the championship. Still led Luton Town to an eighth-place finish in their first year back in League Two, but the following year would not be as promising. Still was dismissed by the club, 
as the team was sitting 17th in the league and struggling to get out of the relegation zone. Still successor might be a familiar face you saw in the Premier League this previous season. It was the then inexperienced manager, Nathan Jones. It looked like the Hatters were on their way back to non-league football, and many critics questioned Jones' appointment. However, the Welsh manager proved everyone wrong and worked wonders at the club. Taking his team from 17th place to 11th in the league, Jones finished fourth in his first full season, guiding the team to the promotion playoffs, which they eventually failed to win. Jones continued the same recruitment strategy, targeting smart, free transfers, which led to the success of bringing in quality players like Danny Hilton on a free from Oxford United. Hilton scored 21 goals when Luton Town finished fourth in the 2016-2017 season. He also scored another 21 goals in the next season as Nathan Jones led the club to a second place, finish earning them promotion back to League One. Jones kept working wonders in League One as he led the club to second place by January 2019, having scored the most goals in the league. His incredible achievements with the Hatters didn't go unnoticed. Jones immediately got the call up as championship side Stoke City were looking for a new manager. Unfortunately for Luton, they had to begin a manager search mid-season, which would obviously disturb any club, no matter the level. Mick Harford, the chief recruitment officer of the club, was then appointed temporarily, which turned out to be a great decision as he led the club to win League One and gain promotion back to the championship in 2019 for the first time in 12 years. Following their promotion to the championship, the Hatters' search for a new manager ended as Graham Jones was appointed as the new permanent manager for the upcoming season, with Harford returning to his original position. Life in the championship turned out to be a very challenging task for the Hatters, as Graham Jones suffered 22 defeats, including a 7-0 humiliation against Brentford. By week 37, the club found itself 22nd in the league, four points away from safety. This led to Graham Jones leaving the club with mutual agreement. Meanwhile, Nathan Jones, who left Luton to manage Stoke City 18 months before, was struggling to adjust to life with the Potters, resulting in his dismissal. This facilitated the reunion between Jones and Luton Town. On May 28, 2020, it was announced that the Welsh manager will again take charge of the club. Jones once again proved that he is the right manager for the club, as he successfully led Luton to safety finishing 19th in the league. The Hatters went into the next season better prepared after a tough first one. The strategy of targeting free agents, loans and cheaper transfers remained the same as Jordan Clark, Tom Lockyer and Gabriel Osho were all brought in the summer of 2020 for no more than 4 million euros. Nathan Jones led his club to a much more comfortable season in the 2020-2020-2021 campaign, finishing 12th in the league. The following season would be even better for the Hatters. Despite the limited budget and financial restrictions, the club finished 6th in the league, earning a place in the promotion playoffs. Unfortunately, the Hatters lost the playoff semi-finals against Huddersfield Town and would miss promotion to the English top flight. Despite missing out on promotion, Nathan Jones was widely praised for his achievement. He was nominated as the EFL Championship Manager of the season. After a bright 2021-2022 season, and with Jones remaining in charge, the club aimed to have an even better campaign the following year, which would arguably end up being the most impactful season in the club's history. Coming into the next season, Luton and Nathan Jones's transfer policy that had brought them so much success the previous years remained the same. In the summer of 2022, the club reinforced the squad by bringing the likes of Alfie Doughty, Carlton Morris, Matt Macy, and Marvellous Nakumba. These new additions, alongside tenured players such as Ruddock M. Panzu, who remained at the club since joining permanently in 2014, would end up playing a crucial part in Luton Town's historic achievements. 20 games into the season, the club was sitting 10th in the league, just three points away from a playoff qualifying spot. Things seemed to look bright until a prestigious Premier League club by the name of Southampton came knocking on Nathan Jones's door, and the latter couldn't refuse such an opportunity. On November 10, 2022, Nathan Jones was appointed Southampton's new boss, with Rob Edwards being announced as his successor at Luton. Edwards lost his first game 
2-1 against Middlesbrough. However, what happened after the World Cup break was something for the history books. Edwards lost just two of the remaining 24 games in the league, taking Luton Town from 10th to 3rd and guaranteeing a playoff spot, with the newly recruited Carlton Morris finishing as the club's top scorer with 20 goals. In the playoff semi-finals, Luton would have to square off with Sunderland, which would prove to be a challenging task given the man in form the Black Cats had in their squad, Ahmad Diello. The first leg ended with Sunderland on top, as they won 2-1 with Diello scoring a screamer free kick. However, Luton Town flipped the situation with a 2-0 win in the return game, which helped them reach the playoffs finals against Coventry City. With players like Jokeresh and Hamer in their team, Coventry City were considered slight favourites to win the final game against Luton. The final would end up being an encapsulating affair, with back-and-forth action between both sides. After 120 full minutes of open play, the game would come down to a penalty shootout. With all of the Luton players cashing in from the penalty spot, it would come down to Coventry City's Fankerty Dabo to keep them alive. As Dabo blasted the ball over the bar, Wembley abrupted with sheer joy from Luton supporters, as the Hatters became the first team to move up the tiers of the English football system from non-league to Premier League in the shortest time frame ever nine total years. Luton Town might have achieved the impossible. However, they have another mountain to climb next season, avoiding relegation. The English Premier League is arguably at its highest level it has been in the last five to ten years. Every newly promoted club aims to not only stay in the top division, but to also challenge for a top ten or even a European qualification spot. We all saw how Brighton completely transformed from a club fighting for relegation to one of the most entertaining teams in Europe. Everyone hates to travel to the GTEC Community Stadium to face the Brentford Bees and let us not forget Fulham and Craven Cottage. This didn't only raise the level of the Premier League, it also made the relegation battle a lot tougher with no one guaranteeing to stay safe, just like what happened to Leicester City this season. It is almost guaranteed that Luton's strategy of targeting free agents and loan players will not be an effective way to avoid going back to the championship. Therefore, serious money should be spent in the transfer window for a survival chance next year. Bournemouth, who were predicted to be one of the first clubs to be relegated this season, used to follow a similar approach to Luton's regarding transfers. During their last two seasons in the championship, the club spent just over 12 million euros compared to the 83 million euros they spent during their first year in the Premier League, bringing in the likes of Dango Otara and Marco Senecia. These additions played a crucial part in the club, staying in the top division. With Luton Town receiving 200 million euros over the span of the next three seasons, serious transfers must be made to challenge for Premier League safety. Another issue that the Hatters will have to face is their own stadium. The club currently will not be allowed to play home games in the Premier League in their stadium, Kenilworth Road, which they have been playing in since 1905. With Luton's promotion, Kenilworth Road will become the smallest ever location in Premier League history. Therefore, the club must invest €10 million Euros in stadium refurbishments to rebuild one of the stands and abide by Premier League rules in less than three months. Mess. This will most certainly result in Luton Town playing their home games at a different stadium, at least for the first part of next season, until the works in Kenilworth Road are done. The club will receive €100 million Euros after gaining promotion, so the money will not be an issue. However, receiving clubs such as Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal and City will be much better for the Hatters on their original turf, rather than playing these games on a different ground. The Hatters certainly have accomplished an incredible feat that football fans around the world can respect and admire. Peli Ruddock Mpanzu went as far as to say this, after gaining promotion to the Premier League with Luton, you know what, I feel like I've completed football. I think I'll retire. Certainly, this is far from the end, not only for Mpanzu's Luton career, but Luton Town's overall journey. In many cases, the journey is just beginning. How do you think Luton will fare in what many consider to be the most competitive league in the world, the English Premier League? Do you consider Luton Town to be one of the most well-run clubs in all of England? Will they keep on exceeding expectations and avoid relegation, or will it be a brief journey to the top for the remarkable club? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments 
and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.